we will start in a sec. How was everyone's day today? I'm having the absolute craziest week, uh, week at work, and I have not had time to do too much else. Uh, today we are going to be covering the top mods for March uh, for Stardew Valley. And then I'm going to try and cover some of the mods recommended on Discord as well. I don't know how deep into everything we're going to be able to get to today because I have a little bit of limited time. But we should be able to cover most of the top mods. Doing good so far today? I'm glad. Alright, so first thing I want to cover is the top mods and where to find them. So if you're on Nexus, which is where I find the top mods for the month, if you go to the Stardew Valley homepage, we're going to be taking a look at popular for the last 30 days. Now, I took note of the ones that were popular uh, a few days ago, but they are pretty much identical to the ones that are still the, uh, popular now. So these are the ones we're going to be taking a look at if you want to follow along. Some of these I have covered before, so they're going to be repeats, but I'm going to cover them again just for the people who may watch this and not have seen that previous coverage before. So I have went ahead and downloaded most of these, but I may have to uh, download some of these as we go along. And then... Uh, we can pretty much just hop straight into it. So the first ones we want to cover today are all of L's mods. Now L's mods are not new. Uh, they have created a lot of uh, retextures for animals in the game previously. However, for 1.6, they have uh, made all new mods just for that update. So we're going to be covering the L's cuter coop animals which we can find here. And then I will link these as we go along. So let me paste these as we go. Poop animals. And this introduces a lot of new textures for all of the coop animals in the game. So here is just some of the chickens. So, uh, <laughs> I am bad at pronouncing some names, so please forgive me. Uh, Brahma chickens, Silky chickens, which Silky chickens are absolutely adorable in real life if you've not seen them. Let me see if I can pull one up on Google. I'm going to hide my screen just in case Google has weird search results, but Silky chicken. I love Silky chickens. Um... They're so fluffy. Yeah, this will this will be good. There's nothing weird <laughs> from Google search. So this is a silky chicken. They're just like super fluffy uh, feathery chickens. And I think they produce normal eggs, but this is what they look like in real life. But that is one that we uh, have as an option with Elle's uh, coop animals. And they come in a variety of co colors, obviously. They look wooly. Yeah, they do. Uh, Bantam chickens. Actually, I'm curious to see if some of these are actual chickens in real life. I only knew of the silky ones. But maybe let's go ahead and see if uh, Brahma chickens are a real thing. Oh, they are a real thing. Oh, they look very elegant. So these are what Brahma chickens look like. They kind of look like your standard chicken almost, uh, but their leg feathers are quite something. <laughs> Can you please uh, check on the Sataro Gojo mod? I wonder if they work. We can check that out after the coverage of the top mods for March. Please keep me accountable for that. Um, because I may, I may forget and get distracted by other things, but I we can take a look at that mod as well today. And then 
if we go back to Nexus, uh, we got void chickens in different uh, textures for the void chickens. Blue chickens, if you uh, if you know, you know. But they got some textures for the blue chickens. Uh, golden chickens. Uh, and then for rabbits, different variations of rabbits. A bunch of solid colors, uh, belted colors. Uh, Dutch rabbits, which have the face coloring along with the leg coloring. Uh, pointed rabbits, which basically have a different color on their ears and feet and tail. Um, <laughs> they're so cute. Solid lop rabbits look like little puppy dogs to me here, but they're super cute. Uh, and then belted versions of that uh, Dutch lop rabbits. And then the pointed versions. Um, and then we have the ducks. And the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are super colorful. And then here's just a little showcase of that. And we'll be checking out these in game as well. But I do want to cover the Nexus uh, pages for Els mods first. That way when we hop into the game, we can look at them all at once. Uh, funny thing happened. Remember when we talked about Skyrim some time ago, you ended up installing Skyrim again? Nice. Uh, don't worry, I'll blow you <laughs> so you don't forget to check out. Thank you. I appreciate friendly bullying. <laughs> as long as it's friendly bullying, we appreciate it. Um, and then we have Els Cuter Barn Animals. So it's going to be all of the barn animals. So the most adorable cows. Uh, so we have Hereford cows, belted cows, and belted is the same terminology that you saw for rabbits where it'll just be... Like the feet in the body kind of having a, a different color variation. Uh, solid versions, spotted cows, our beloved spotted cows. Highland cows, which that's another one I want to show you guys because Highland cows look so cool. Highland cow. Yeah, they're so fluffy. Look at these guys. They're just little balls of fur furry goodness. I absolutely love them. I think they're so cute. But we got the Highland cows, uh, void cows, uh, and then we have goats, belted goats. You're going to notice a lot of the same variations for each of the animals. But even though it's similar variations and similar colors for all these different animals, you can pick and choose between all of them. So if you want like belted rabbits, but then solid goats, you can do that. And I'll show you how to do that when we get into the game. Uh, long-eared solid goats. <laughs> They're so cute. Um, long-eared belted goats. Ooh. And then, uh, let me get back to where I was. And then we got the spotted goats, void goats. And then same thing with the sheep. All the same variations and colors. But they're so adorable. I really, really like this. And then we have alpacas, which I have not seen in the game yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And then <laughs> alpacas with socks, so the feet have different colors. And then the pigs, which are just so, so fat and cute and round. And then uh, deer. Wait, deer are in the game? I, I knew about the alpacas, but not the deer. Interesting. I'm getting spoiled for 1.6 a bit. <laughs> And ostriches, I knew about those. And then that is all of the barn animals, which I will link now. Yeah, that was one of them. Uh, I wasn't aware deer were in 1.6, but I'm assuming since there's a texture for deer, that means deer are in the game. <laughs> um, But yeah, I'm <laughs> someone had to fill me in on where you can get deer or if you can just buy them from... Uh, Marnie, like any other animal. Uh, Alright, so this was the barn animals. So there's the link for that one. Horses, I have showcased before. But many, many, many different options for your horse. So we have some prismatic hair. Prismatic hair just means rainbow hair. I think rainbow dash from My Little Pony. Uh, the horses are a lot uh, rounder and cuter. In this variation uh and then we have solid uh 
Epilusa. <laughs> uh, Pinto, speckled, uh, colorful horses, just ma basically means uh, the mane is different colors. Shire and roan horses. Other horses, and uh, I've shown this on stream before, but the uh, the horse that you get from the uh, assassin line, I believe, from Skyrim is an option. Uh, and then, yeah, just all kinds of different variations on the horses as well as the saddles, which is really nice. So we'll be looking at that in the game as well. Getting spoiled by the mod previews, crazy, yeah. So this is Cuter Horses. So let me link that for you guys. And I'll be uh, eventually including all the links on the live stream as well. I uh, will do that sometime post live stream. And then Elle's got Cuter Cats and Dogs as well. Now there are obviously new cat variations default with 1.6 but if you want even more variations for cats and dogs then this is uh, your option so i'll show you how to do this in game but we have solids and socks striped striped with socks tuxedo cats which i love tuxedo cats uh bicolor spotted pointed turkish van i've not heard of that one before uh, in Scot uh, solid Scottish fold, in a striped version, in a bicolor version, uh, calico cats. Oh, I love calico cats. Tortoiseshell, uh, ragdoll, bangle. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one. Aussie cat, uh, snowshoe in Siamese cats, and all kinds of things. And you can change uh, all three variation or. Actually, I'm curious now. I haven't tried it since 1.6. Usually you can change multiple. Yeah, 155 per mod is absolutely insane. One of the tuxedo cats looked exactly like your cat, Lisa. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really cool that since there's so many variations and they're based primarily off of real life animals, you could probably safely get uh, something that looks like a variety of your cat or dog or horse if you have if you own horses. So this was Elle's cuter cats. Cuter cats. And again, we'll be looking at all these in game in a sec. I just want to go through the Nexus pages first. And then similar for dogs, we have Elle's cuter dogs. And this was also one of the top mods for March. We have Australian Shepherd, Bernese Mountain Dog, Border Collies, and all of these come in so many different variations. Uh, Beagles, Foxhounds, Retrievers, um, um, GSD, I'm trying to, Golden Shepherd? No, uh, German Shepherd something, maybe? Uh, St. Bernard, uh, Samoyed? I apologize. My words, they, when I haven't heard it pronounced before, I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, Boston Terriers and Boxers, English Bulldogs and French Bulldogs, Solid Bull Terriers, Bicolor, Tricolor Bull Terriers, Corgis, love the Corgis, uh, Pitbulls, Dutch Hounds, Rottweilers, oh my gosh, just, the list just goes on and on with the dogs, Dalmatians, Great Danes, Solid Italian Greyhound, uh, the Bicolor Italian Greyhounds, Hyperion Huskies, Alaskan Malamute, Pug, Cocker Spaniel, oh no, I'm just hitting all kinds of words, uh, Wimaraner, <laughs> wow, I'm like calling myself out for how bad I, uh, pronunciation I am, uh, Newfoundland, Great, uh, Pernies, Poodles, Shiba Inu, um, and then solid and bicolor versions of that. Collies, Cocker Spaniel. Oh my gosh, there's so many dogs. Um, but yeah, that was all the variations of dogs. That probably had, provides 303 skins. So it's a lot, it's a lot of options. I looked up L's llamas and deer. They are simply just retextured sheep and pigs, not actually new animals. Oh, that makes sense. I, did, I thought alpacas were in, but I guess not. 
Maybe I just saw someone on Twitter using this mod then for that. Um, you get Pitbull Dog and it clears the minds of all enemies. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good use for that. Uh, Spaniel is like Spanish version of Daniel. Okay. You could tell the mod author uh, is <laughs> a dog owner. Yeah. They're... It helps too that dogs come in a large variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out Elle's mods in game. I don't think I linked Elle's dog, so uh, let me link that to you guys real quick. Cuter dogs. And let's start up the game. So this might take me a sec. We ha might have to start up the game a couple times. I did install, I think, all the mods previous, but I haven't started the game since I did that. So we'll see if uh, anything breaks. And then, small spoiler, you are going to see I have my Brent Pastora recolor installed. We are going to talk about that because one of the top mods for March was Vibrant Pastoral Recolor, uh, the patch. But since that patch has come out, um, the actual mod has gotten updated. So I wanted to install the actual mod and only the actual mod to see if it uh, truly is updated fully for 1.6. Uh, so let's go on our test farm. That's going to be the best place where we can try out uh, the default color variations of L's. So let me speed my character up real quick and then we'll head to the barn. So, <laughs> um, my horse still looks a little weird from the last time I was showcasing this. This is a spotted horse with prismatic hair and I'll show you how to change these options in a sec. This is not the default, uh, color variation of the horse, but I'll again, show you how to change that. But this is just an example of Elle's cuter horses. And I'm looking at the map now, and it looks like even though Vibrant Pastoral Recolor has had an update since 1.6, it is not fully updated for 1.6, so you'll probably still want that patch after all. So we'll cover that when we get to that mod, but that's what these weird um, boxes are uh, showing me is uh, that you're still going to want that patch. So we'll cover that when we get to it. But... Here is the default skins for the cuter coop animals, minus the rabbits. I have those in a separate coop. But you can see here we have basically the white and brown solid variations of the chickens. Uh, one that looks very close to the default version for the duck. And then if we go to this coop next to us, these are the default skins for the rabbit, which is a cream color basically. Yeah, there's a lot of doggo breeds. I love German Shepherd personally because my cousin's dog, Rosa, loves me <laughs> more than him. <laughs> nice. Uh, got the Earthy Recolor update, which is working fine. Ooh, that's nice because Earthy Recolor is my favorite and I was kind of waiting for that one to come out before I like kind of use that on my gameplay. So thank you for letting me know. Uh, the rabbits are cute. Yeah, I love the rabbits. Uh, and then let's go take a peek at the barn and then I'll show you guys how you can change these textures. <laughs> so everything so round and cute looking, but we have the uh, brown cows, basically. They're not the solid variations. I believe these are the belted variations. And then we have some spotted cows over here as well. And the cream colored sheep is what you'll get by default as well as the white version. So again, these are the ones that are by default, and I'll show you how to change those in a sec. And then for pigs, the default uh, skin is that pink color uh, that they are typically in the default version of the game. But and again, but we can show you how to change these textures. I forget if my test playthrough has a cat or a dog. We have a kitty. Um, Right now, it's just one of the default variations, but I'll show you how to change that as well. So to do that, let's go to the title screen. So one mod I haven't covered on this stream anyway 
is generic mod config menu. So if we go back to Nexus, I want to actually show you that page and link it to you. But whenever you're downloading mods, I highly, highly recommend you also download generic mod config menu. And I will link this now. Generic mod config menu. I think I acronymed that correctly. Um, this will let you change the configs of mods within the game without you having to touch the code. Not every mod will support this, but most of them do. So I highly recommend that you download that with any mod installation, really, it is just super convenient. So where you're going to get to it is on the title screen on the bottom left, so the left of my model. You're going to click on this gear icon, and then the generic mod config menu will open. Now, I have a lot of mods installed because I'm covering the top mods for March, and then I have some for my regular playthrough as well. But we're only going to cover L's for now. But let's say you wanted to change uh, how your cat looks. So you can change um, basically any of the options that you want. You can just give them a little check mark here and then you'll have that option when you start a new game. Uh, so this is how you do it. And if you already have uh, a cat selected. I believe this still works. If we go back to the mod page, usually it tells you instructions. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go back to Nexus, and this is something I always recommend with every mod, is to read over the install instructions. So here we have Smappy and Constant Patcher installed, and then we extracted it, and then uh, from here, Multiple skins are allowed, separated by commas. Uh, and then you can run Smappy. Unlike my older pet mods, this no longer replaces the vanilla uh, pet sprites. However, the process of changing the existing pet's appearance has changed in 1.6. So because I have the default skin already selected from Stardew, it didn't get replaced. Um, but if you want to change your pet's appearance at the Wizard Shrine of Illusion, um, seems to be have been removed. Uh, if you don't start a new save with the pet breed that you want, now it looks like you have to adopt a new one with the appearance you want from Marnie. So it looks like your current cat from the default game will not get replaced and you instead have to adopt a cat with the one of the new skins. So I actually have not done that yet in the game, but we can maybe check that out. Uh, and then let's maybe just select one we can easily identify later. Uh, let's tuxedo black. I was gonna, I was gonna tuxedo void. Let's also do that one. Uh, so we'll maybe take a peek at Marnie in a moment, but if you want to do the same thing with dogs, keep that in mind. You want to install this mod before a new save or before adopting a new pet, essentially to, um, make sure you are getting the color you want from this mod. It seems it no longer uh, by default replaces the pets. So hopefully that made sense. Um, and then for the barn animals, the default here, so white cow default, you can change it to whatever one you want, basically. So this one will be a replacement. So for the white cow, let's maybe change it to solid black. So solid midnight. And then again, if you want to adopt a new cow, you can check any of these. And then when you go to adopt for Marnie, these should be options on top of the default. And then brown cow default, let's change that to maybe Highland cream. So we get a nice fluffy cow. And then again, anything you want to check will hopefully be appearing by Marnie, which we'll be checking out in a moment. A goat, let's go ahead and make this a sock silver goat. And then that's what you're going to do for basically all the barn animals. So we're just going to go with that for now. And uh, let's go ahead and make 
these sheep and alpaca. Let's do a nice uh, solid white alpaca. And then for the pig, let's do socks fawn. And then for the ostriches, I don't have any ostriches, so we'll just leave this alone for now. And then you could change the color of the wool and cloth that comes out as well, but we're not going to bother with that today. And then let's go ahead and change some of the coop animals as well. So for the chicken, let's go ahead and make a silky chicken. So silky white. And then for the brown chicken, let's go ahead and do a uh, red chicken instead. Boy chicken we'll leave alone. Same with the blue chickens. Uh, we'll keep these mostly the same. Uh, rabbit. We'll just do lop pointed. And... Dinosaur. I don't think I have any dinosaurs on that map, uh, particular save, so we're going to skip over those. And then horses. This is where you can check uh, what horse skin you would like. So I've shown off some of these before, but we'll just pick a random one. So Epona. Actually, let's go with Cleveland Bay. And then let's not do prismatic hair. Let's do a bright red saddle and save and close. And then... Uh, let's go back into the game. So if we load our save, we should see the animals have changed. Could cows be different from each other? So I believe, and we'll see if we can uh, talk to Marnie and double check this. I believe anything that was checked in the mod, you're able to adopt. So we'll check Marnie out and see if that's true. Uh, let me go ahead. I'll make the time a little later. That way, when we check in with Barney, uh, hopefully she'll be around. I think she sells on Saturday. So it's hard to tell because I made the white chickens still white. But these are the silky chickens. So you'll see that they're a little bit more fluffy looking than the brown chickens we have over here. And then you'll see... Um, the ducks are no longer how they looked previously. We made them uh, brown ducks with blue wings, I guess. And then I made my uh, brown chickens. Not too much different, it looks like, than previous. But the white silky chickens are so cute. And let's go look at the bunnies now. <laughs> the lop ears are so cute. I love them. But they do look, to me, they look like little puppy dogs almost, but very adorable. Uh, I think these were the Void uh, Lop uh, rabbit skin. So very cute uh, and very hungry, supposedly. <laughs> and then for the cows. <laughs> uh, so one of them, we made that very fluffy cow we saw earlier. So here is that cow. And then we... Uh, I guess picked void cows and then we'll see here. This is a sheep, but it's appearing as an alpaca. So very cute. And then for our goat, we um, made it a spotted, not a spotted. Uh, it was the one with the different colored feet. I forget which one it was called, but you can see all those different variations we picked are working. And then let's go to Marnie. I think hopefully she's open. So let's go to Marnie's ranch. And purchase animals. So I'm curious. Oh, all my stuff is full. I forgot about that. But I am hoping... We can adopt one at least. Um, I would have all full ones. Okay. 
We may not be able to adopt one of these. Can we adopt a cat or a dog, though? Supply shop. I apologize. Probably need to make another coop before we can adopt. But we can see the um, sprite or the option shows what we selected on that menu as well. So the rabbit, the preview for the rabbit is what we selected. But we'll have to... Can you sell animals? I actually have never actually done that in Stardew Valley. Let's maybe sell something. Um, sell. Now we should be able to adopt, so let's do one more. So now we should be able to adopt and get a menu up. And then let's do the same thing for this coop here. There we go. Now let's go back to Marnie's. And... Adopt. And we'll see if any other option pops up. So let's adopt a cow. And then I bet you it didn't give us an option. So have to maybe look into that one a little further to see if I can get an option to show up for the other ones. But it looks like it just gave us another of the one the preview had selected, which was a black cow in this uh, particular example. But either way, at least the default variations of the barn animals and coop animals are available. Even more if you sell their spawn. Um, yeah, so that was else. I'm going to exit to Nexus and we can cover some of the other mods now. But again, that was all of L's mods for 1.6. And then the gener generic mod config menu. So let's move on to Polyamory Suite. So this is a mod that lets you have multiple spouses. And supposedly it's multiple spouses on your wedding as well. And allows for unlimited hugging and kissing your spouse. And it works with many of the expansions, including Reside... Rich Side Village, Stardew Valley Expanded, and a few others. And then here, it kind of just goes into a brief introduction of a little bit more about the mod. And then uh, some details around the config file, which we'll see if that is one of the ones in the generic mod config menu and whether it's supported there. So let's go back to the game. Yep, so we'll see here that there are some config options for this mod here. So, there's a lot of options. <laughs> uh, so, you can change the minimum hearts to kiss someone here, uh, the hearts you need for friendship. These are probably what they are by default uh, in the game. And then how far away you need to be from someone even to trigger a kiss. And then it looks like you can switch it to allow relatives to hug, all kinds of things. Uh, I actually have not tested this mod yet. I uh, don't know if we can get a wedding going quickly. Uh, probably not, but uh, we can go over some of the mod options here. So uh, the bed. You can change the width of your bed here. I'm guessing it's the default bed in the game. But I could be wrong. Um, and then what else do we got? For the wedding, days between proposal and the wedding, you can change that. Maybe we'll change it to one. And then that'll make it so we can maybe try to get, trigger a wedding in the game with multiple spouses. We'll see. Uh, other spouses join your wedding. So we might have to marry two people to see the multiple spouses. 
and then that's that's it for the most part um do you guys want me to spend a little time to get a wedding going or would you rather move on to a different mod because this might take me a moment oh okay so one thing i did want to show this is the new bed with the mod so we can see here that the bed is five long it is um it did interrupt some of my existing furniture but all your roommates slash spouses can be on this bed now maybe leave it for last yeah we can do that because it yeah it might take a little bit more time all right so let's go ahead and move on uh two vibrant press or recolor so again even though this has been updated since 1.6 came out uh, it at, is not fully updated yet, though I did take a peek at the posts and it looks like they are troubleshooting the rest of their plans for getting it fully updated for 1.6. Um, so this is the patch for that and then the actual mod is what I meant to show. So the mod author is currently working on the updates for 1.6, so you won't need the patch. But just so you know, if you are wanting Vibrant Presto or Recolor and you do not want to run into... Oh, sorry. Wrong, uh, wrong scene there. There we go. Um, if you don't want to run into graphical errors like this you'll need the patch. So let's go ahead and do that together, actually. So I'll show how to download this. So for this, make sure, again, with any mod, you're reading the install instructions and downloading the required mods. The original mod is required for this patch. I already have it download, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, but let's go ahead and download that and then I'll get my desktop showing in a second so we have the patch downloaded and the game is currently shut down at the moment so we're going to right click I'm going to go ahead and extract the folder and then I am going to bring that over to my mods folder I have a testing folder where I throw all of my kind of temporary testing mods and we see I have the original Vibrant Pastoral Recolor already installed. And we're just going to add that right in. So now if we launch the game, which I will do now, we should see that when we get back into the game, it's fixed. Now there is actually a couple other patches that I've seen floating around for some of these major recolor mods. So it's not just Vibrant Press or Recolor that's gotten a patch. If you have a favorite uh, mod that just recolors all of Stardew Valley, take a peek and see if someone's made a patch for it. Or take a look at the forum post to see if the mod author is actively working on it. Uh, so let's get back into the game. It shows up. Let me figure out why. There we go. All right. So now if we go outside, we should see that grass is fixed. Yep. So this is how you can get Vibrant Press or Recolor working again is by downloading not only the original mod, but this patch. And on that note, I want to show you. If we go back to Nexus. And we go back to the top mods. I believe there is one more uh, variation of that. Yep. So there is one for simple foliage. So if you've ever used the simple foliage mod and you were waiting for a 1.6 update, uh, there is a patch made by another user here. And then they have said in their notes that once the official version is out, which it is under the works right now, then this mod will be deleted. But if you want a temporary fix to get you going, then this is... Same exact thing and the same exact process where you need both the original and the patch, uh, but this will get you exactly where you need to be. 
so that was simple foliage patch for 1.6. So even though we didn't show that one off, I am going to link it to you guys. Uh, patch. And again, make sure with the patches that I'm going to be linking that you also uh, install the original mod. And then here is a vibrant pastoral recolor patch. So those were the two patches I saw out. Now, there's actually a couple of frameworks that got in the top mods for Stardew Valley. So there's not any mods for these frameworks yet, um, except for Foxcore. Supposedly, this one is for all the mods this mod author has made. Uh, so... I know a popular one is a uh, better chest. I'm not sure if Foxcore includes compatibility for other mod authors to use better chest and if that's how that works. But I'm not going to be covering the frameworks too much. But when mods come out that utilize these frameworks, uh, make the top mods or someone recommends them to me, I'll make sure to cover these frameworks more thoroughly then. And then another one is... I'm pretty sure you saw another one on here that was a framework. Oh, uh, Custom Bush is another one. It's another framework where uh, people are going to allow you to have custom bushes in the game now. And actually, this one I am covering because that's actually used in some of the other ones I'm going to be covering today. So... Custom Bush Framework. I'll link that. And then since we're talking about it, let's go ahead and cover those mods. So. If we go back to the top mods for March, we'll see two mods called Cornucopia. One is for more crops and one is more for more flowers. So if we look at Cornucopia more crops first, we can see what it adds. Yeah, three top mods use custom bush. What is the other ones besides cornucopia? I'm missing one. Um, but let's go ahead. Actually, is it the scarecrow one? No, we'll cover that one in a second though. Uh, so for cornucopia, more crops. This adds... 90 new crops and 35 new tree species to the game. Um, it includes uh, a variety of different crops. So here is a little preview of what you would see in game that it adds. So lots of different textures and everything here. And then I believe there is a image. Yep. So... There's a couple different versions of this mod. I believe I only have the Essentials Pack installed, but it inclu includes a lot of herbs, such as basil, um, and then a different variety of fruits like cucumbers and kiwis, and then uh, some more vegetables such as lettuce, and um, it looks like there's also vanilla, uh, which is nice. Makes me wonder if it gets added to ice cream somehow. And then sugarcane, turnips, all kinds of things. And then for fruit trees, avocado. So have your avocado toast. Uh, cocoa pods, pears, and pistachios. You have all the packs and can turn them on how much uh, of the mod you want. Yeah. So here is the different options. And if we go into the game, we'll probably see that there is... Options under the generic mod config menu, I hope. Crop variation. Nope, that's a different mod. Uh, this may not be supported by... Uh, generic mod config menu, actually. That's fine. I can show you how to install the other variations. So, for the config, 
Oh, it says it does. We recommend using generic in my config menu. Configuring cornucopia. I must have missed it. It is. Just looked at it since I'm using it in your game. Uh. Did I? Let me double check. I have it installed. So if we go back to my mods folder. We have cornucopia, more flowers, and more crops installed. And then let's go back to the mod page. How to install. We have custom uh, patcher and we have the custom bush, which is the framework we mentioned. Install Dramaric, mod config menu, and space core. I have those installed. Um... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it's not showing up in my generic mod config menu. But let's see if they show up in game. So let me switch back and load them up. I might have installed something incorrectly, which is actually fine because then we can go through how to troubleshoot mods as well. So we know one of the new crop variations is... Actually, I don't know if you can do the new items through the item cheat menu. You yeah, have farm type manager installed. Um, I don't think that was a required mod, so no. Is it a required mod and it just doesn't say? Let's, for now, look over the flowers one, and then we can troubleshoot why things are not coming into... Space Core is. I have Space Core, though, installed. So, I have it under my framework. So, Space Core. But let's go ahead and look at more flowers which adds uh, 40 new flowers to the game, as well as five new flower trees. And then we have the essentials pack, which is what I thought I had downloaded, though we'll take a look at that again in a second. And then here is a preview of some of the different flowers you'll see in the game. And then uh, some more with it looks like vibrant press or recolor installed so these can look different a uh, different vibe depending obviously what recolor mod you have installed but as far as why it didn't show up we can always take a look down here and see if it recognized it so whenever you load stardew valley smappy's console will load as well and usually you can see what mods are being loaded in here. Oh, so here we go. Um, so it looks like I had an error loading the game. And it looks like I don't have a required mod for custom bush installed. So if I go to custom bush instead, we can see what the requirements were. Oh, that's my problem. So I didn't have a mod called Foxcore installed. So that is a very good example of troubleshooting. So just to kind of go over that again, if you ever have a mod that isn't loaded properly, always, always, always go to the Smappy console and see if you have an error. Now, keep in mind with Smappy console, if you have a lot of mods downloaded, this Smappy console could be very long. So you might have to scroll up like I did. And that's why I missed it is I didn't scroll up. Um, so we know now that I'm missing a mod for the framework custom bush. So what we're going to do is we're going to close the game. We are going to download Foxcore. Which ironically was the other mod that I thought didn't have a mod associated with it today. Uh, so this was the framework we were talking about earlier. So I will go ahead and link Foxcore. Foxcore. And then... Let's install it together. So if I go to my downloads folder, 
uh, one thing to keep in mind is sometimes uh, Nexus, it'll think it's a suspicious file and you might have to tell your computer that it's okay. Most files uh, that you download are okay. I can't, I, I can't give you my 100% guarantee, um, but I can tell you Nexus does a virus scan and says whether or not it's safe to use. So check this before clicking the yes, it's okay button. If this says it's okay, it's okay. I think Nexus rejects the mod if the virus scan says it's not okay, but I guess I don't know that for sure. So this is where you would double check if it's okay to download safely. So keep that in mind for Nexus. There is a virus scan and if it says safe to use, you're good to go. So we have that install or downloaded. We're going to go ahead and extract that. And then I'm going to move that to my mods folder, just put it under framework. And then let's go ahead and close that and restart the game. And then we'll see if the error goes away. You know, I don't mean for these things to happen, but sometimes I'm glad errors happen while we're streaming because it lets me go through the troubleshooting process with you guys. And Snappy is just really good at throwing out errors if something goes wrong. So red is very bad. <laughs> it means something did not load. Purple means something needs updated. Yellow is just a warning. So you'll see yellow on my Snappy because I have other programs that can technically interfere with Snappy, but I've never had a problem. So um, I am thoroughly warned if something does go wrong, but at the same time, I... Uh, I've had no problem so far. So let's go ahead and load the game again. And if we go back to the general mod config, yep. So they loaded successfully now and we'll see the options under the generic mod config menu for more crops where we can enable and disable the uh, options for this pack, including whether or not we have the trees enabled or the crops enabled if you want the herbs and all kinds of things. So we'll see that for both the crops as well as the flowers. So now if we load the game, maybe we can see some of those seeds. And then I will link the cornucopia mods in a moment once we get to see them in the game. This giant bed's throwing me off. All right, so... We know one of them is Basil, right? So here is Basil in the game, and I am using uh, the Cheats Menu mod, which I featured in the past, but that's how I'm getting access to all the items in the game, essentially, including the ones I've downloaded. So Basil is one of the new herbs, and then I believe we saw Vanilla is also one. So here is the Vanilla. And then there's like 90, 90 plus crops, right? So we're not going to go through all of them. But uh, zucchini was also one of them. So zucchini here. And then obviously all of these have seeds associated with them. So uh, we have the zucchini seeds here. And so many more crops to choose from, basically. I love it. Working on the artisan goods and foods for these sets of mods. Wow. Wow. That would be a really nice thing to have, actually. I didn't think about the artisan parts of all of these. So if we go back to the mod page, maybe they'll go into detail. And then I can also link you Cornucopia More Crops. More crops. Here's that one. And more flowers here. And we'll check out some flowers in a moment in the game. It is the new version of PPGA with the original artist. Oh, nice. Yeah, I played with that very briefly back in the day, but I haven't uh, touched that mod in quite a while. Uh, you're back. Welcome back. Uh, and then, so if we go back to the mod page, we can see again, had so many new uh, flowers, flower trees for that one and for the crops. 
adds all kinds of 90 plus new crops, 35 plus new trees, including uh, berry bushes and mushroom stumps can be planted and remain out of season, producing yearly when the weather is right. That's cool. Um, some new giant crops. So they didn't go into a list of what, but imagine, I imagine any of the crops that are similar to like broccoli, cauliflower, in that same family will have similar results. Melons as well. Uh, vanilla minded artisan good additions for appropriate crops such as flowers and alternative methods for obtaining oil, sugar, and cloth. So that's nice. So very extensive mod and obviously all of the art we saw from the previews both here and in game, very thorough and it mixes with vanilla very well. So very, very cool mod. And then for the flowers. Very, very pretty. I was seeing if we could get a name of a flower and then we could try to find it in the game. But I don't see a list anywhere. Oh, yeah, actually, here it was. So we have blue mist, a chrysanthemum. Iris. Ooh, I love irises. So if we go into the game and do iris. Oh, it's so pretty. I wish you could, uh, you can eat it. Why? Why would you eat the flower? Minus 50 energy. Don't eat the irises. <laughs> but very pretty iris. And then if you are a Guild Wars fan, red irises were very important to that game so that's part of the reason i love them because i absolutely loved guild wars but what was some of the other flowers so we had um lily in morning glory was another one so let's look at the lily very pretty and morning glory i absolutely love the textures on these they are very vanilla friendly. So the the artist did a tremendous job on this pixel art. So that is cornucopia for both the crops and the flowers. And we saw that that was also the two frameworks we wanted to cover. So that included fox core as well as more bushes or sorry, not more bushes, uh, custom bushes. So those two frameworks were needed for Cornucopia and adds a ton of content to the game. I just remembered there was a mod that turned Stardew Valley into a roguelike, so I'll look for that. Oh, it's outdated. Yeah, that's the sad thing about 1.6 is some of the really cool older mods, until they get updated, they're unfortunately not playable anymore. So lots of lost content from a lot of talented people. But hopefully some of them will be able to update their mods soon. All right, so let's move on to the other top mods for March. So we've covered L's, Vibrant Prestora Recolor in Simple Foliage, Cornucopia and the mods that are associated with that for the framework mods. Let's talk about Gift Taste Helper next. So Gift Taste Helper is not a new mod, but there is a new version for 1.6. So if we go to our relationship, we can see when I hover over people, there is a new box that appears. And this is showing all of their loved gifts. So they're, if you're curious, as to what someone likes, you can just install this mod, hover over them, and we'll see exactly what they love. So rabbit foots is a lot of everyone's favorite loved gift. But if we go to the calendar, it also shows up for the calendar. So we got uh, Abigail's birthday today. And if we had, you know, a golden pumpkin or a regular pumpkin, we could go ahead and give that to her for her birthday including Amethyst. So we could probably find Abigail real quick. Oh, that is not the one I meant to pick up. 
There we go. So if we change the time a bit, we can verify these loved gifts by going to Abigail's house. So if we go into the town, let's go ahead and go to the saloon. And then we'll see from NPC map locations that Abigail is at Pierre's. And she's just leaving her room. Perfect timing. So we can go ahead and give her the amethyst. And we can see if we go back to the relationship menu that we got the hearts from the love gift on her birthday. So it's a very, very convenient mod to have. Hello, we are covering the top mods for Stardew Valley today. Um, Sorry, I'm seeing some messages are getting deleted. I'm just making sure there's not like a weird auto mod thing going on. I'm not seeing any weird auto mod activity, so um, if hopefully if a, mes a message is getting deleted that shouldn't be, um, let me know on Discord because I turned on auto mod on YouTube, but I have no idea what it deletes and what it doesn't delete. So, all right, so I'll keep my eye on that on the side. But that was Gift Taste Helper. It's a simple mod, but it's extremely convenient. And it's a 1.6 version of a beloved mod from before 1.6. So let me link that to you guys. So this is Gift Taste Helper continued. Gift Taste Helper. There you go. All right, so if we, <laughs> Highland Cows again, um, go back. So we've covered most of these, but there are a couple more I want to cover. One is no friendship decay and no fence decay. I want to cover these. I'm not going to show them in game because I also want to discuss one thing about them. So they're very simplified versions of some common wants by the community. So friends forever basically means that if you neglect a townsfolk for an extended period of time, you won't lose hearts with them. So if you don't already know this, if you, let's say, have five hearts with someone, but then you don't talk to them for a year, you won't have five hearts when you go back to talk to them. You'll have less hearts than that. I am not sure how quick the decay is in the game, but it does exist. Um... So there are several mods previous to 1.6 that solve this issue by basically disabling that decay. And this is the 1.6 version of that mod. And then same thing for no fence decay. Even though I believe the golden clock does this by default in the game, some people like to not have their fence decay even without the golden clock. So this mod basically makes it so your fences stay good forever. But, and I want to show you this in the game. If you have the cheats menu, which I've uh, shown before, but I'll show it again. It's, and I've kind of been using it in this stream already. But the cheats menu mod has these already. So if you want to avoid downloading a couple different mods, you could just download this mod and then enable only what you want to get out of it. So I have this on my install just for testing purposes most of the time. But if you want to use some very popular uh, single-handed mod, not single-handed, like one-off mods. Like one very popular one-off mod is Harvesting with a Scythe. That's something you can enable through the cheats menu here. Uh, same thing, uh, Durable Fences is the same as No Fence Decay. And then if you go to Relationships, No Friendship Decay is the same as that mod we were just covering. Now, cheats menu is nice. If you want to, again, have like a one-stop shop for some of these uh, highly requested simple mods. But if you don't like having more than you need, 
then going with these more simple versions of mods that only give you what you're after is the way to go. So there's not much to show in the game for these, but again, Friends Forever is this one. And No Fence Decay is linked here. Max friendship stops decay with all your, uh, all past your spouse. That's, I didn't know that actually. I guess I've never really naturally gotten someone to max hearts though, so that makes sense why I never noticed that. But thank you for that info. All right, so not too much more to cover for the top mods for March. But let's go ahead and cover the return of immersive scarecrows. I haven't tested this out yet, but this is a mod that supposedly lets you place scarecrows between tiles. So it doesn't take up a whole tile on its own anymore. Uh, it will just be between them. So let's see if we can test that out. So let's go back to the farm. And let's clear this area first. And then we'll till some of it to kind of show the tile locations. And then we'll test out the scarecrow. So let's first give me better, better materials. So let's give me an iridium hoe real quick. All right, so we have our Iridium Poe having got us a little small plot here. And then we'll just put some seeds here. So let's do, <laughs> I forgot I had Cornucopia installed. I'm like, there's so many seeds. Um, let's just put some spring seeds down. Oh, sorry, I forgot it's not spring. What season is it? Is it fall? Corn. Oh my gosh, there's so many uh, different seeds. Um, I'm a little confused why corn still comes with everything. So the cornucopia mod, interestingly enough, if you type in corn, for some reason, a lot of those cornucopia mods pop up. Uh... Mixed seeds. Let's just do mixed seeds. Uh, all right. So put a bunch of mixed seeds down. And then if we get a scarecrow, in theory, we'll be able to put them anywhere. Which is true. So we'll see here that I put the scarecrow down not on a individual tile, but between crops, which is really nice. Space saving and indeed immersive. So that is the entirety of what this mod does. So let me go ahead and link you this mod. Immersive Scarecrow. And let's go ahead and move on. So Deluxe Grabber Redux, let's cover that one next. And then this changes what the grabber is able to get. So I think I have this one installed already. So if we go to the title screen, we go to the left here. Deluxe Grabber Redux here. And then we can say what we want the Deluxe Grabber to be able to pick up. So you can have it harvest crops, which is interesting. We can maybe even test that one out. So that's not enabled by default, but with the generic mod config menu, again, you can change the config however you like it. So uh, let's have it maybe harvest crops by default or in enable that, I should say. And then you can have it make it so you get experience or not. And then there's lots of different options here, including digging up artifact spots and 
All kinds of neat things. Uh, shaking trees for seeds. That's interesting. Grab the farm cave mushrooms. That's cool. I like that a lot, actually. So uh, just for awareness, the default configuration for this has you harvest crops inside of pots, harvest berry bushes, grab slime balls, grab the farm cave mushrooms, and then lets you get your experience and reports its yield. But just for testing purposes, let's have it harvest crops and go back into the game. For some reason, YouTube didn't register my like, even though I liked the stream before it went live. Hmm. That's strange. Um, between that and then someone's high getting deleted somehow, I'm a little curious if something's going on on YouTube's end. Uh, so none of those crops... <laughs> I didn't save, so none of those crops are here. So we'll quickly get that going again. Uh, I will maybe disable the auto mod. As terrifying of a concept that is, that is. Um, I will look that at that in a moment. I don't know why that would change your like, though. That just seems like a YouTube problem. And then let's put some mixed seeds down. And actually, let's put some fertilizer down. Deluxe quality. Wasn't there a... Sp oh, no, it's speed grow, right? And then let's put some speed grow down. And then we'll put some mixed seeds down. And then we'll cheat a little bit. And then with the cheats menu, I am going to auto water my crops. And then let's get the grabber going. So auto grabber. We'll see if you work. I don't know what its range is, actually. Maybe we'll put a couple down and just test that out. Uh, and then let's go ahead and Give it a couple nights rest. Interesting. Whenever I'm saving, this catalog's coming coming up, and I don't quite understand why. One of the mods is doing that. If I were to guess, it's the polyamorous relationship one. Uh, so it looks like we got some experience, so I'm curious if the auto-grabber had grabbed something. It did. So there was something right here and it's gone now. And if we go to the auto grabber, it looks like it was a red mushroom. So let's rest a few more and then we'll test that out again. Actually, let's test the range on this. So let's get rid of this one and see how far the auto grabber can pick up. So it looks like we got a couple more experience. So it grabs something else. And then one more night and then we'll go check on the auto grabber. Okay, so now if we go. It looks like it has full range of everything that was just there. And it grabbed everything just fine. So mod works perfectly. Let's go back to the mod page and see if it says anything about range because I'm curious. So it doesn't say how far the range for the auto grabber is. I imagine it's maybe whatever the range for the actual auto grabber is. Um, oh, actually, never mind. If we go back to the title screen, it looks like if we go here, the harvest range, if you have it harvest crops, minus one is infinite. So this is pretty standard in mods, is if you don't want it to be infinite, you need to give this an actual number. Otherwise, negative one is pretty much the entire map, from my understanding. So if you only wanted to go 
uh, like three tiles over, then you'd want to make this three. So keep that in mind if you're using this and you're enabling it to harvest crops. It's a little broken at infinite range. Um, but it's a very, it's a, it's a neat mod though. I like it. I will say, I think it'd be a little broken for harvesting crops for, but for things like mushroom cave, uh, I think that's very handy. But that was the deluxe auto grabber. So let me go ahead and link that one for you. Auto grabber. And then let's move on. We have an item extensions framework that I missed when I was talking about framework mods. I am not going to cover it unless we see another mod is using it, but lots of frameworks being made for Stardew Valley, which is always fun to see because the more framework mods there are, that means there's more mod authors can do with the game. So that's always nice. Uh, let's go ahead and cover Yomi's cute princess dress. So if we load the game again, I believe I already have this installed so we can open up Fashion Sense and give it a go. The auto grabber seems like an overpowered Junimo head to me. Yeah, I would agree. It seems like a very overpowered item if you're not careful. Uh, all right, so for Fashion Sense, again, for Fashion Sense, you're gonna want the Fashion Sense framework installed and you can get the mirror from Pierre for 1500 gold, or you can start off in the game with it. It's a checkbox in the character creation, in which case it'll get mailed to you by Haley. But I have the hand mirror tool here, so I'm going to left click and it opens the hand mirror tool menu. And then I have a couple of Fashion Sense mods installed, but we can look for the dresses here. So I don't have any uh, shirt or skirt mods besides this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at Yomi's dresses. So one thing to keep in mind for the mod is you can tell what pack it's come uh, from from the little menu that pops up. So we can tell the mod author for this shirt is Yomi and this comes from Yomi's cute P uh, princess dresses pack. So uh, Yomi we've covered a few times on this channel. They regularly make mods for Stardew Valley for Fashion Sense in particular. Uh, but we can go ahead and select shirt one and then with dresses Something to keep in mind is that there is an associated bottom with the top. So we have dress one. So I want to grab pants one. And then let's, you can change the color of the top and the bottom if you did want them to be different. And then once again, for fashion sense, let's say I want to change the top to match this bottom exactly. You can copy the current color here. Go back to the tops and paste the save color, which you can see the color in the save preview. And then we have the dress. Very vanilla friendly, and it does look like a princess dress. Uh, in fact, if we made this some variation of yellow, probably can get something that kind of looks like Belle from Beauty and the Beast here. Maybe a little too green of a yellow, but there's your example. You can mix and match the shirts with the tops, but usually how these are intended is there is like a shirt too and then like a pants too um so just keep that in mind as you're going through these so here is the other dress which is a little shorter and then again you can change colors however you like so here's this dress in a nice green and then if we go back we can get the third set going so they're all very similar, but different frills, different accents. Um, we'll see here, this one has a white blouse associated with it, as well as a black tie. And then if we go to four. And then let's go ahead and make this like maybe a bit darker of a dress. So very similar. We'll see it's missing that black tie 
uh, looking thing or, or bow, I should say, on the dress, but it still has the white blouse underneath. And then there was one more. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. A lot more sleek of a dress this time. And let's change it to maybe a blue. Oh, actually, this one. Here we go. So ruffles, it looks like. And I don't know. I really like this dress. I like the, the sleeker, sleeker looking dresses rather than the frilly ones. It looks like Cinderella in her dress was made by the Junimos. Yeah, exactly. Fashion sense is a tremendous way to add style variation. And then what's really cool is you can save outfits. So if we wanted to save this one, we'll just call it um, the blue princess dress. We can click OK and it'll save it. Now, let's say I want to um, go back to my default, but then I have a couple of mods for travel here. Uh, actually, if you want to dress up for the Easter uh, egg hunt, or I shouldn't say it, just the egg festival in general, we have a bunny here. That's super cute. So you could save this as its own outfit as well. So you could call this one bunny hat. And then you can basically switch between the two. So we have the bunny hat and the princess dress. And it's really easy to make a bunch of outfits and switch between them. So I know that it can be really convenient to have like an adventurer's outfit every time you go into the mines or the caverns. And then seasonal outfits, one for each season, especially winter. It's nice to have like cozy mittens and stuff like that uh, installed. And then cozy scarves as well, which I featured on this channel before. And then you can just switch between all the different outfits. And because Fashion Sense lets you preview everything from uh, its menu, it's really easy to just go ham and download a lot of different Fashion Sense outfits. So this book is part of Backpacks and Bobbles. So if you're role playing a magic playthrough where you were installing a bunch of magic mods, this would be a really cool thing to have. Just a, like a floating book companion. But I love Fashion Sense. It really is my favorite framework. I've never played with Fashion Sense. Does it have any formal wear options? Yes. So um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, and then one thing I will say that's a little, it kind of sucks about Fashion Sense is most people do make Fashion Sense mods geared towards female farmers or female presenting farmers. So there's not as much male Fashion Sense mods out there, but they do exist. And what's also nice about Fashion Sense is they didn't need to be updated for 1.6. Any mod that was made for Fashion Sense basically worked with 1.6 when fashion sense itself got updated so you can go to any fashion sense mod out there it should work even uh with the the big patch so uh, i feel free to explore and a good way to do that is what's really nice is most of the time unfortunately yomi is not a good example it's one of the few mod authors that does not do this you can look up fs and then like space and then We'll see here, I'm, so, I'm sorting these by endorsements, but a lot of mod authors start their um, their title for their mod with FS. Or there'll be FS somewhere in the name of the mod. So this is a good way to find a bunch of them. And then obviously the other way you can do this is if you go to the Fashion Sense page itself. Um, re under requirements, obviously it gives the requirement for Fashion Sense itself. But any mod that uses Fashion Sense and has it correctly um, for their requirement, it's all listed here. It's all listed here. So you could go through these and see if there is a title that kind of piques your interest and um, see if it, it works there. So we could even maybe type... Um, so I just did wedding because wedding fashion sense mods probably have some formal attire associated with them. But we see here there is like a Chinese wedding dress, dyeable wedding dress for fashion sense. Um, 
Uh, there's a wedding pack. So if we can click on any one of these, really. So this one, uh, there is a male outfit, just one. The rest are all female. Again, kind of female centric or female presenting centric here. Um, but there is some male ones for this one. So sometimes you have to think about like a theme and then go with that. But this is a great way to find fashion sense mods. Tuxedo. We can see if one is called Tuxedo. Tux. Looks like there's none that have the word Tuxedo in the mod name. Doesn't mean tuxedos don't exist. It's just you might have to like dig deeper into all of these different mods to figure out which one has them. I'm there's gotta be a tux head in here somewhere though. Um let's see. Uh, there's a suit. Aha! Here you go. A suit. I'll link this one to you. This is a TWST suit. There you go. Uh, obviously, this is geared towards uh, male presenting farmers or um, genderless even. So there is that. And then, again, I encourage... Uh, just really taking a peek at any Fashion Sense mod, because there's so many. There's always so many. <laughs> there's always so many more being made as well. So, the, wor the world is your oyster, as they say. And all kinds of looks. Very high fantasy looks, too, sometimes. Uh, but there's a lot of vanilla-friendly ones out, out there as well. <laughs> My hero. I'm glad I could help. I'm glad we could find one. I was a little nervous we wouldn't be able to find one just on stream, but I'm glad we, we got one. I was like taking a peek at some of these other one. Deer tails. That's cute. So this one, some uh, fantasy deer tails. So if you want to be a half deer for whatever reason and role play that, there you go. Lots of options. All right. So we can probably move on to another one i think we've got everything covered except for this mobile phone continued which i was like briefly reading before the stream but i have not tried it out yet but supposedly it lets you have a mobile phone in the game with certain features i think i have it installed let me double check oh uh Looks like there's mods that require this already. So it's getting some some coverage. I don't know if they're all by the same mod author or not. Like I guess we can find out. Oh. We're not going to we're not going to do that one. We're not going to do that one. I'm glad I have <laughs> I have adult content disabled. <laughs> uh so just a warning by the way on Nexus, there are some adult mods I have them disabled, or they should be disabled anyway. Um, so if you have a minor, or you are a minor, just be careful. I think if they're disabled, I think it warns you by default. But we, uh, on this channel, I will never cover an adult mod. Just so you guys know, um, we're keeping it uh, PG uh, to... You know, we're just keeping it PG for mods. Uh, we're not going to be showing uh, any naked portraits or anything like that. Uh, Better Crafting just got its 1.6 update. Nice. It's an updated version of their original mobile phone. Oh, nice. Um, All right. So let's see if that mobile phone is working. I don't know if it's a end. I think it said. Oh, there it is. So here's the mobile phone. Oh, I'm on the wrong scene. My apologies. So I was in the game and by default, when you install this mod, if you want it to pop up, it you press end on your keyboard. Now you can probably change the default button in your configuration, uh, but let's play with it. I have no idea what this does. The idea of adult mods made for a game like Stardew Valley is still not getting through my head. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't get it either. 
Uh, so it looks like we can call people, but I may need to call them maybe in game first with like the regular phone. Oh, and then looks like you can customize your phone. So, <laughs> can have your phone be the fish bite sound. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's go back to the clouds if we can. There we go. And then let's maybe do a white phone case. Um. Oh, interesting. So I also have the mod to do installed, which lets you basically make a to do list. It supported it as an app on the phone. That's awesome. That I was not expecting that. So. There might be some mods it treats as like applications that you can just pull up on your smartphone, so to speak, in Stardew Valley. So well, that's really cool. Uh, so this is like kind of a good role playing way to be adding like using the to do list without it just like randomly popping up in the game. So good role playing aspect there. I'm really impressed by that, actually. I am curious about the phone book and how we can get people's name to pop up. So let's I'm curious. Uh, so let's get a regular telephone and put that down. And let's just call a random person real quick. Um. Now I'm curious if I put the phone up again, is Robin going to be there? No. Okay, I'm not sure how to get people in the phone book. Maybe you need to be friends with them, actually. Hang on. Uh, I'm not friends with anyone, so let's... Uh, use the cheats menu to... I thought I could... Oh, sorry. Wrong, wrong menu. Um, let's make Abigail our friend. And now let's see. Aha! Mystery solved. They have to be your friend before you can call them. So we can call Abigail. Looks like her profile picture shows up. Um, I think we can ask her where she is. I'm at home right now. Nice. And then you can just chat. And then it's like you were chatting with them IRL or if like, you phoned them maybe. You dreamt my left hand had turned into a gigantic crisp. Doesn't that mean anything? That you have weird dreams, Abigail. That's what that means. Uh, after X hearts they get added? Yeah. Uh, cool. I really like this, actually. And again, I, I think I love it more for the role-playing aspect of like, hey, let's uh make it to do. Just whip out that phone and make it to do. That's cool. I like that a lot. So let me link this. So this was mobile phone continued. All right. And that is all the top mods for March. So I know there was a request in the beginning to cover a mod. Could... Someone remind me what we wanted to cover. Some modded NPCs use cell phones, so you having one makes sense. Yeah, I really like the role playing aspect. That, and if you think about like IRL, who doesn't have their phone on them uh, most of the time? Most people have the phone on them most of the time. All right. So. I will take request for additional mod coverage now. Um, and then once we're done with all the requests, that'll probably be the end of the stream for today. And then I'll be playing a, uh, my 1.6 playthrough during tomorrow's stream. See if I can scroll back up and see what that mod was. Oh, let me live chat. 
not letting me scroll up that far on my end. It was Gojo mod. Gojo. You know, when you said Gojo, I was wondering if it was the anime. I've not seen Gojo, by the way, so... Um, but I am very aware of the memes surrounding this guy in particular. <laughs> um... <laughs> so, this is a custom NPC mod, it looks like. And let's see how to install it. We can maybe get Gojo in our game. Uh, guide to download the mod. They... I have nice pictures here. So download the mod and follow the guide. Um, open up mods, manual download, constant patcher, Stardew modding API. Interesting. Do you have to have Stardew modding API? Oh no, that's just the smappy. That's a weird way to word that. Um, okay, so it looks like it just needs content patcher and smappy, which we have. Um, so let's go ahead and download. Put that in our downloads folder for now. And let me get that installed. So I'll show you the process. There we go. Um, why is it? Okay. And then 7-zip. Let's extract. And then move to our mods folder. Put it under a testing one for now. So is there any instructions for how to meet them in the game? Let's test see if that's there. Uh, first time making the mod, so not perfect. I don't know how to do heart events, so he has none. There's some weird bugs. He disappears during the Luau and Jellyfish Festival. Um, and then removed from the Flower Dance Festival. You can marry him. Uh, the room doesn't load, though. And then if you want to follow the mod author, they gave the socials here. I'm going to link this mod for you guys. Uh, go, Joe. All right, so we have it installed. Let's go ahead and get the game going. Oh, I already have the game going. Let me restart the game. <laughs> And then we'll make sure there's no errors while it's loading. Ta -da. And then we'll just load the test farm and see if we can locate him with the NPC map locations. I don't think I ever showed off the horse when I was showing off uh, the elves earlier. I don't think I showed off the redo redone horse. Very pretty combo, though. I like this. Um, all right. So if we go to the map. Oh, he's up here. No, that's Marlin. Is that him? Uh, no, that's Gojo. That's the Gojo guy, too. So he's at the Adventurer's Guild, it looks like. I'm going to make it a little later in the day, because I don't think the Adventurer's Guild thing is open. But let's go ahead and warp to the Adventurer's Guild. Uh, it's locked till 2. Is he still here? He is. So let's make time a little later again. I want to see if he leaves. All right. Uh, we'll just make it 2. There we go. Now we can go in. And he's right here. How did you resist the urge to uh, of clicking on concerned ape on the loading screen? 
me going through testing mods, I always just like blow through it. <laughs> All right. So here he is. I will say the art's slightly different from vanilla. It's close, but I will say like visually, I think it looks slightly different. So uh, you might want to look at other style mods to see if you can get this to match. Uh, it's not too far off, though, so it's not like uh, hitting DC Burger portraits where <laughs> if you don't have it for one NPC, it's very alarming. It's not anywhere near that bad. Have you noticed the carp from this town is a bit different compared to other places? I wonder why. Everyone I talk to hates them. So, again, uh, there's no hard events according to the mod page. So, kind of just an NPC you can interact with. Um, what we can do is see if we can trigger different dialogue, though. Let's so increase our relationship with him by, like, a lot. And then... Make it the next day, and then we'll see if we can get some different dialogue. Let's go in our giant bed. <laughs> like, I I don't like the giant bed. But, um... That's the other thing, too. We can maybe try to trigger a couple of weddings. We're not going to marry Gojo, because it sounds like uh, <laughs> the room will load. Um, but, let's see. Still at the Adventurer's Guild, so we'll go ahead and make it 2 p.m. again. And warp there. Oh, looks like he was exiting. I'm actually curious where he goes, so let's watch him. And follow him like a creepy stalker. <laughs> I'm curious if he goes in the mines. The mod author page, I don't think, included his schedule. So, it's a mystery to me. Uh, let's go back to the mod page. Let me double check I am accurate when I said that. Oh, no, I lied. There it is. Uh, here is his schedule. So, looks like he always starts off inside the Adventurer's Guild. And then looks like he heads to the museum some days. Um, upper town. Uh, underneath the community center on Tuesday. Goes to the forest some days. And then... It looks like, uh, again, the museum. So he has a set schedule. You've got a spark in your eyes. Keep that curiosity alive. It'll take you places. And then he's winking at me. So, that's nice. And nothing else for dialogue for today. But yeah, if you've ever wanted this NPC uh, from the anime in your, in your Stardew Valley experience, then there you go. I don't think there's too much else to show off there. I guess with the time we have, we can try and trigger a multiple spouse wedding with that poly mod that I was showing off earlier. Um, so, let's go talk to... What do you need to marry someone again? Mermaid pin? Yeah, give this to the person you want to marry. I don't know if I need to give the bouquet first. Um, but let's go to Abigail. Where is Abigail? Abigail is home, so let's go to Pierre's. So that's nice. I am sensing some likeness towards him. <laughs> Is a handsome looking uh, anime guy from an anime I have not seen, but I've seen so many uh, memes 
around that particular that particular guy. I'm in, uh, I, I'm a little behind on my anime, so I'm not familiar with his actual character, but his design is nice. Uh, that's a good boy. Oh, let's skip this. And this. Alright, so... Let's... Can I just ask her to marry me without the romantic interest? Okay, so we'll have the ceremony in one day. Let's go ahead and go back to the farm. And then we'll try to marry someone else after that and see what happens. So we're marrying Abigail. I am going to skip through this because I've never married Ab Abigail and I don't... I know it's not too, too much spoilers because all the weddings are, for the most part, the same, but... I want to save this for an actual playthrough. Aww. I like Abigail's clothes in this, though. Her hairstyle's cute. Life is going to be different from now on. Might be real different here in a sec. Alright, so I think Alex was the other person. Um, So let's go get another mermaid pendant. And head on over to Alex. Uh... Let's just go to Pierre's and he is home. I don't know why the catalog keeps popping up. Whatever mod's doing, that's a little, little annoying. All right, let's, what's weird is with the mermaid pendant, I'm not even clicking anything. I'm just like walking up to them and they're like, yes, I accept. All right, so now if we go to the farm and sleep. Yep, they're both there. So the mod works. You can marry multiple people and they're both at the wedding. I can't say this is a mod I'll personally play with, but it's good for the, the people that really want this type of gameplay. Um, or for the challenges, because I know a lot of people like to do the challenge of marry everyone and then divorce everyone. <laughs> um, so I think I linked this mod earlier. Yeah, I linked this mod earlier, so but let me know if you need it linked again. Ma'am, you literally forced them to love you with cheats. Look, I am all powerful. And, <laughs> and, uh, and they must marry. They must marry me. There's no choice. Not in the cheats. Not in my cheat farm. My test farm. Where I have all the power that Stardew Valley has at my fingertips. <laughs> Was there any other mods that we wanted to cover today? Actually, I'm curious. Is Abigail in the house? Yeah, okay. I was curious how they're... Because Abigail wasn't outside waiting for me. So I was curious how she was inside. So they both interact. And... Looks like only one person's room is added. I was also curious about that. So whoever's your latest spouse, that's the room. So keep that in mind, I guess, if you do use this mod. I don't think so, actually. I think that's all of them. All right, cool. So I think that is everything then that we're going to cover. That was all the top mods for March. And hopefully there is a few mods that you guys really liked there. I know L's is always a favorite, but the cornucopia mods is pretty cool if you want a huge variety of different crops and flowers. And um, yeah, hopefully 
you all got something out of that. If there is any mods you would like me to cover in the future, then feel free to join the Discord and offer suggestions. I love to take you guys up on most of the suggestions you give me. I try to cover them all. Uh, sometimes I forget though, so always feel free to remind me too if there is one that you recommended that I didn't get to showcase yet. But I will be streaming tomorrow, same time, which is 4.30 Central, 5.30 Eastern. I will just be going through my Meadowlands playthrough, and I hope to see you guys there. But other than that, I hope you guys have a really great night, and I will catch you later.